with bated breath before that happens. But I want to read a quote to you. There's a, the Roman historian Pliny, and uh, he wrote the natural history, oftentimes even a geological source book. But he has a, a fun quote about the famous Hellenistic Greek sculptor Praxiteles. Hellenistic uh, comes from the Greek word Hellas, which is just the Greek word for Greece. The Hellenistic period is the period after Alexander the Great, from Alexander to basically the death of Cleopatra. That's when the Hellenistic world came to a close, and then the Roman Empire took over. So roughly 300-year period, from 330 to 30 B.C. is the Hellenistic world. Pliny says of Praxiteles, When asked which of his works in marble he liked the most, Praxiteles used to say, those to which Nicias has set his hand. So highly did he esteem his coloring of the surface. So Praxiteles makes the sculptures, and then the painter Nicias paints them. But this certainly helps to reinforce the idea that Sculpture was very commonly, regularly painted in antiquity. And so talking about Praxiteles, we have before us here a figure of the goddess Aphrodite, uh, the Aphrodite of Knidos, K-N-I-D-O-S. This, uh, now, this is a Roman period sculpture from the 2nd century uh, A.D. or of the Common Era. So this is also then why, well, the Aphrodite of Knidos was a very popular ancient Greek sculpture that was copied far and wide. So this is why decorating so many ancient Roman patrician villas, we now today have multiple copies of the Aphrodite of Knidos in different collections all around the world. There's a few other ones. Now these, of course, are all absent of their color. And if we think, well, how it would have looked rather strange to originally appear in color, like some sort of... Uh, gap mannequin or something like that. But uh, maybe one colorized version of the Aphrodite of Knidos won't look too unusual to us. The painting of the birth of Venus by Sandro Botticelli in the Uffizi. This is inspired by the Aphrodite of Knidos. And the Venus de Milo is also a, an iteration, a variant on that same sculpture. Also, there's, uh, in modern times, as we increasingly come to understand that ancient sculpture was once painted, artists like to produce works that are inspired by those painted traditions. And, for example, one uh, British sculptor from the 1800s, John Gibson, an English sculptor, uh, enjoyed producing classical works with paint on them, classically inspired pieces. So his most famous one, perhaps, is something called the Tinted Venus. I have a picture of that here. So this is Venus, Aphrodite, the same goddess. The skin has a bit of a pink haze, a pink tint to it. You see also the gilding on the, uh, the apple that she's holding and her, uh, her bracer, her bracelet. The blue in her hair, of the, 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 the ribbon in her hair, and then her blonde hair as well. Set up in a bit of a rotunda. A rotunda is this round-shaped chapel. This is an homage to the original setting of the Aphrodite of Knidos, which was also set up in a rotunda, this round shrine. So she could be equally admired from all angles. Then there's a fun quote by uh, John Gibson, this artist who created the Tinted Venus. Now, he uses a word that I tell my three-year-old not to use, so, um, so, but it's not that bad of a word. The moderns, he means us, the moderns, being less refined than the Greeks in matters of art, are, from stupid custom, reconciled to the white statue. The flesh is white, the hair is white, the eyes are white, the drapery is white. This monotonous, cold object of art is out of harmony with everything which surrounds it. <laughs>